Hello everyone and welcome to the ASUS AIoT podcast. Today we have uh, one of our, our closest partners with us. Uh, we have uh, Pipa Chip uh, today, who is Portfolio Development Manager at Intel Capital or EMEA. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here. Great. Um, so first I want to start with a personal question. So were you always in tech and how did you start uh, working in tech? Yes, almost always in tech. So my first job was in retail and then my second job was with Intel and I started as an intern. So mm -hmm. I've worked with Intel for 18 years. Oh, that's a long time. variety of roles. Yeah, I must like it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm sure. And um, what is the mo thing that excites you the most or, or keeps you going, you know, in tech? I really like the people that you come across if you work with technology and technology companies because they're building things and creating things that don't exist yet. And I really like the future looking vibe that you get out of working with technology companies. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, and right now you work for Intel Capital. I do. Yes. <laughs> Can you make a little introduction of uh, what it is? Sure, yeah. So Intel Capital is the venture capital arm of Intel. Mm -hmm. They were founded in 1991. And over the last three decades, I've invested around about $20 billion in deep tech, early stage startups. And we engage across four key domains that drive the future of compute. So we invest in cloud, devices, silicon and frontier. And the investment portfolio now is right between two and 300 companies. And we're investing around half a billion dollars a year at wow. the moment. That's a lot. Yeah, that sounds like a lot. <laughs> yes. So th there are um, so many different companies that, uh, you know, they, they start, they try it, n new things, and uh, some of them are successful, some of them are not. But I'm sure that uh, if all of them could get some support, maybe from a company like yourselves, would really help them on, on their journey, right? Uh, is there a difference between a typical, um, you know, investment venture capital company and yourselves when you yeah. invest? Yeah, there absolutely is. Um, thank you for asking. So um, Intel is a corporate venture capital fund and different from pure venture capital funds, Intel really shows up as a partner. So we invest dollars, but at the same time, we invest additional resources to support those portfolio companies to grow ahead of the market and to succeed. So we have something called the Expert Placement Program, and that is, as it sounds, we will place experts within the portfolio companies mm -hmm. uh, where required. Um, and they may be domain experts, uh, there'll be deep tech experts, principal engineers perhaps that are working at Intel, and they'll spend time with those companies helping them with their tech development, their tech strategy. Uh, we often give early access to technologies and hardware as, as well, um, in addition to kind of more market development support like um, high quality introductions. So in 2022, we made around about 1,100 um, highly curated introductions for mm -hmm. our portfolio companies to their potential end customers. Yeah. Uh, and that resulted in $110 million of additional revenue off the back of those meetings. Right, because you have the uh, direct contact with end customers. Yes. But also uh, or, or, um, if they need some support along the, you know, the supply chain or if they need some hardware. You're also able to make those introductions. Yes, absolutely. And we, we stay invested. We stay invested in, in time and support in addition to the to the dollars, which you would imagine. OK, great. Um, so you, you defined the four frontiers that you work in, mm -hmm. right, that you invest in. Cloud devices, silicon, frontier. But what do you define as frontier? Yeah, frontier is, like it sounds like, the really leading edge new stuff. So, for example, um, Joby Aero uh, have created um, aircraft that's uh, vertical takeoff and landing and fully electric. Uh, and the plan is for that to be um, a kind of city airborne taxi. So by 2025, you should be able to, for around about $200, go from the center of New York out to JFK Airport. Oh, that would be great. Yes. Save a lot of time. <laughs> <Yeah>. Queuing up. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, great. Okay. Um, and um, which companies have you invested in? Can you give us some examples of exciting new technology that you encountered? 
Yeah, definitely. So um, we invested in the unicorn that now is um, Min.io. And so that's the world's favorite um, object storage. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's 1.2 million Docker downloads a day mm -hmm. or something like that. So, you know, they are they're hugely successful and, uh, you know, it's wonderful to be able to partner with them. Mm -hmm. uh, we also uh, invest in invested in a company called uh, Excite mm -hmm. and they are um, hardware as a service. Mm -hmm. So we're all familiar with um, infrastructure as a service, software as a service. Yes. But what Excite does um, is create or facilitate a hardware as a service model. Mm -hmm. So um, for their customers um, or for all companies, you can move your um, capital expenditure away into an OPEX model, um, so you're an as a service subscription model. Mm. And then if you think as a hardware vendor, yeah. you move then from these unpredictable spot purchases from your yeah. end customers yeah. into a more predictable recurring revenue stream and all the benefits that come with that. So we're really pleased to be working with them. Yeah, that's really uh, innovative as a, as a business model because usually uh, hardware, as you said, it's, it's a maybe you have to wait a long time until people will really want to renew their hardware. Okay. What about the security in the space of security? Because lately we've seen at ASUS um, a surge, you could say, or more interest in um, it's the, the security aspect of things, right? So if we give, take the example of IoT, a lot of people have made the deployments, mm -hmm. but then they realized uh, through different incidents that uh, probably the network is not that secure. So uh, people are offering now solutions that can secure endpoints and uh, you know server security, etc. Mm -hmm. Is there um, any company that um, or that you've invested in that is related to this uh, topic? Yeah, I think security as a topic is you know going to be. Pervasive. It doesn't matter what the innovation, the security concerns and requirements will always be there. Mm -hmm. um, we have a great relationship with a company called Fortanix uh, and their hardware security modules uh, enable kind of, as you described, with mm -hmm. um, IoT devices that are out at the edge. Um, their um, data security manager product enables uh, real controls and predictability mm -hmm. um, around those devices. Mm -hmm. And it's also super scalable. So it can cope with surges in demand. You don't have to over provision. Right. Uh, you can use that use that product to support that for your business. Okay. That's, yeah, that's really interesting. And I think that um, in the future, in the coming years, this will also be a uh, uh, an aspect of technology that uh, that grows, right? Absolutely, yeah. I think we'll continue investing in the yeah. security space for sure. Great. And, um, well, we have to talk about AI because it's everywhere. Yes. And, uh, we've been hearing about it for a year or so yeah. now. Um, I'm sure you have lots of uh, companies that work in this space. Can you yeah. use it all? Yeah, we have many investments in the AI space and loads of companies doing really interesting things. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a company called Lilt who do enterprise translation solutions. Uh, and what's really cool about them is they, they keep um, experts in the loop. So they keep language experts in. So they are training the model and doing high quality translation mm -hmm. because they're constantly using real translators as well to kind mm -hmm. of sense check the results. And I love that. I come actually, I have to make a comment. I come from uh, the linguistics and literature world. Yeah. And um, it's it always, you know, um, interesting how the debate between, you know, uh, what is humanly possible and the creativity side and how a uh, machine will never be able to replicate that. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting the way they work because they are sort of uh, intertwining the, the technology aspect, but they're also using people who are constantly tweaking the models, right? Absolutely, yeah. Exactly like you would do in the healthcare space where mm -hmm. you're not making the decisions, but you are enhancing patient outcomes with AI where you're giving the caregiver a, sub, a smaller subset of information yeah. that is that is narrowed down by mm -hmm. AI. Mm -hmm. uh, Lilt was super exciting, but also a customer of theirs. So right. we used their um, solution and within the first year of, of working with them and being their customer, I think we saved around about 40% on our translation costs. Oh, that's, so, that's um, very noticeable. Yeah, <laughs> yes, they're definitely worth having a look at. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. 
other AI companies that you've invested in? Yeah. Um, so uh, in the cloud space, we've got any scale. So if you're um, a developer looking to build an AI application, mm -hmm. then any scales um, AI platform is something that you can build on top of. Mm -hmm. um, and then that gives you, you, you can run and scale you know, straight away with no delay um, and at significantly reduced cost. It's a real enablement mm -hmm. solution that they have. Mm -hmm. Or over in the exciting frontier stuff, mm -hmm. um, they have a company called Beep, which is a lovely name in yeah. itself. And as you would imagine, it's about vehicles. So mm -hmm. they're um, multi-passenger, um, fully autonomous electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. And they're really looking at making um, transport safer and more affordable and more accessible. Mm -hmm. And an interesting kind of additional solution that they provide is obviously they're generating and learning um, a lot of data as yeah. they're running these autonomous vehicles. Yeah. And they're using that then to generate um, safety solutions that are vehicle agnostic and, and kind of sell those on. Right, so to vehicle makers, for example. That's great. Okay, and um, so if ASUS comes across a company that um, is interested in you know, having Intel have a look at what they offer, would uh, that be something that you would be open to? Absolutely. I think we're always looking at building a robust investment pipeline and companies are constantly exiting via IPO or mergers or acquisitions. So, yeah, we would love to have a look. Oh, oh so the, but the condition would be that they have to be a deep tech company. Yes. Early stage. Yeah. As long as they're early stage deep tech. Um, Intel often go in as first investor, about 75% of the time we go in as lead investor, mm -hmm. I should say. Um, but also conversely, if Azus are interested in speaking with any of our Intel Capital portfolio companies, mm -hmm. uh, then we'd be very happy to make introductions. Great. We will we'll keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And um, my last question is actually our signature question. And... Um, also, with a personal take, uh, and so the question is, imagine we are 30 or 50 years from now and um, choose an aspect of life and, you know, that you think will change mm -hmm. and uh, tell us what the future looks like in this, um, well, with this topic. So what has changed? How has it changed? Mm -hmm. And what is the technology they're using? Okay. Okay. Well, I, I like that question. I'm still waiting for the hoverboards from Back to the Future too. But um, in the absence of that, I do think all things um, electric vehicles and autonomous driving and transportation are exciting. And anything that makes things safer and faster uh, is super exciting. So, you know, AI generating the capabilities there, I think is, is really interesting. And I, I would really like to have a go uh, in one of those Joby Aero mm -hmm. uh, air taxis yeah. um, in New York when it's an option. But yeah, so I think transportation, transportation, anything that reduces my commute would be fantastic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> likewise. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for sharing this with us. And well, hopefully we can uh, uh, have you in the podcast again in the future. Yeah, I'd love to. Thanks for inviting thank me. Thank you.